Hello everyone, my name is Zimra Simon, and today we're going to talk about the characteristic impedance and integration lines in each of the steps. So first, why do we need an integration line? Uh, it's very important in specifying the polarity for modes. So if you have a waveguide that has multiple modes, you would need to use the integration line to define the polarity for each mode. It's also very important uh, in uh, mode alignment. So if you have a two-port network and you want to align this mode, uh, without having any phase shifts or anything. So you need to do the same uh, integration line in both ends of the ports in the same direction. And it's also very important in calculating the characteristic impedance for the ports. So there are multiple ways for calculating the characteristic impedance in wave ports. The first one is the ZPI, where the ZPI, the age of the uh, assumes the power and then calculates the current over the whole surface. There are multiple ways. Uh, you can use it either by uh, assigning integration line or without it. There's also the ZPV, where the HFSS defines the power and then using the integration line, you define a line and over this line, the voltage is calculated. There's the ZVI, where, the, where it is the coupled averages between the ZPI and the ZPV. And there's also the Z-wave, where it is the issue between the electric field and magnetic field. So as you can see in this example, we have uh, at the very uh, left one, the mode is aligned because we have the integration lines in the same direction. But in the right one, we have different integration lines pointing at different directions. And this is why we have a phase shift in the same mode. Make a small demo on the effect of having different characteristic impedance on the port. So now I'm going to do a small microstrip line. So starting, we can have the solution type on HFSS1 model, and its solution type is HFSS. So we have the drawing plane is XY, and we're going to do the ground plane. So from here and then the ground plane. So for my design, I'm going to have the X size to be 20 millimeters and the Y size to be 40 millimeters. And the starting position is 0, 0, 0 from the global coordinate system. So here it makes the X from 0 to 20 millimeters. Uh, let's define that to have to have the name of the ground. And let's change the color to orange. Now let's make the substrate. You will have it. So let's name it the substrate. And let's change the material to the FR4 epoxy and OK. I'm going to have the height of this substrate to be 1.6 millimeters. And then and then let's make let's make the strip line. I wanted to have this micro strip line to be resonant at 5 gigahertz. So this is why when I used the calculator, it, it told me that I need to have the width to be three millimeters. So the X size would be three. And in the position, since we have the X size in the substrate itself to be 20 millimeters, so we're going to have 20 over 10 minus three over 10, and then zero, and then it's going to be on top of the substrate, so 1.6. So let's apply, and yeah, it should be correct. Now I'm going to um, change the color. And let's name it. Okay, uh, let's now put the boundary conditions. So I'm going to right click and then assign boundary. You can use either perfect E or finite conductivity and then assign copper, for example, but I'm going to use the perfect E and then OK. And then for the ground plane, I'm going to assign 
down G and then perfect E. So now I'm going to change the grid uh, to be on the XZ plane to be able to draw the, the wave grid. I'm going to choose draw a rectangle and then from here I'm going to draw a small rectangle. And then I'm going to edit its properties in the position for it. So there are some guidelines about uh, the size of the wave grid. But yeah, you should have it like from five of the width or three to four times the height. So I think it's about 7.8 or 8 for the X size. And for the Z size, it should be like 10 each or 7 W, I think. But I think it's 10 each. And for the position, since we are drawing from the X position, so 20 over 2. Minus the size 7.8 over 2 and then 0, 0. So let's apply and see. Yes, that should be okay. Usually you know that you're you're good with that part when you um, see the fields. Now we're going to assign a wave part. So right click after I selected the rectangle I need, and then assign uh, excitation and then port, and then I'm going to assign a wave port. So as you can see here, we, have, uh, we haven't we have defined any integration line, and now we have only two methods for cal calculating the characteristic impedance, the ZPI and the Z wave. So we're going to define an integration line. We can zoom in here. We need it to be inside the port and from the This one is defined, so you can see the characteristic impedance now is ZPI, ZPV, and ZVI, and Z-wave. And this is for only one mode. So if I change the number of modes and I put like three modes or something, I need to define the integration line for each mode. So I'm going to only do for one, and that's two for the ZPI. I'm going to click next and then finish. I have done this demo before, and for uh, all of the, the characteristic impedance options for defining using the waveport. And here you can see the different numbers or values for the characteristic impedance of the port. So you can see like here, ZPV, they are all close to 50 ohm. Let's put at the five meters instead. Nearly 51 ohm. And you can see that this one is the, I think the Z wave one. Yes, you can fit on. And this one has the highest characteristic impedance. Mm -hmm. It's like 22, uh, 111 ohms. Uh, so here we've created a small demo to show the effect of mode alignment. Um, I've made another wave port at the other side, so now I have a two port network. So let's now assign um, the port excitation at each one. So this one I'm going to right click and then assign excitation, assign port excitation, and then wave port. And as you can see here, now I want to make it for the ZPI. So as you can see here, I didn't define any integration line yet. So let's define. Just going to zoom in a bit. We want to, to have it from the center and then to the ground. So this is for the first part. And then let's repeat the structure and get to the other side. So right click, assign excitation, port, wave port. And then this one I'm going to make for the same mode an opposite integration line to show you the effect of the phase shift that's going to happen. So from the center and then to up. So this is defined. Next. 
And then let's do our simulation. Let's see here. Let's zoom in a bit. Uh, as you can see how this mode is, if we rotated the structure, let's view the other mode, which is this one. So let's view the other mode. You see the 180 phase shift that happened because of the integration line that I did in the opposite direction. This is for the same mode. 